Have you ever imagined your life to be something else? That you were something else? Something not human? Imagine if being that thing meant that you had to hide your true self from other people or risk your own life or your family's lives. Hi, I'm Allie, the literary sewist. Here in my crafting castle, I create projects inspired by the books I review. So grab some funnel cake, sit back, and let me tell you why A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow inspired a mermaid tail sewing project. And while you're here, please consider subscribing to my channel for future installments of my bookish sewing goodness. Tavia and Effie are two main characters. The story is told from each of their perspectives, so it goes back and forth each chapter between the two girls. They are adopted sisters. Tavia's family adopted Effie after she lost her mother and had no remaining family to take care of her. They have become best friends throughout their lives. Tavia is a siren. She must stay hidden and protected from the outside world. So very few people know about Tavia's abilities. Sirens are considered very dangerous because of their ability to use their voice to manipulate other people into doing things. The sirens who don't use their ability from time to time start to slowly lose their sense of reality, which becomes a threat to other safety. Effie grew up around the local Renaissance Fair. Her mother was one of the featured personas and as a very young girl allowed Effie to train to become one of the mermaids in the fair. When Effie's mom dies and Tavia's family adopts her, she continues on with the fair. The fair has become the last remaining connection to who her mother was and what family she had left. Over the years, through her training, she continues to become more and more popular with the guests at the fair. These two girls are normal teenage girls. They deal with relationship drama, they deal with friendship drama, school pressures, all of those things. But they both have their family secrets that they have to deal with in their own ways. With the mounting awareness about racism, not only with the girls being black, but also with Tavia being a siren, the girls' worlds begin to spin and collide and take them on paths they never expected to take. So what did I like about this story? The way the story deals with racism is very poignant. The author uses the sirens as another example of racism in our country, but also sirens can only be black. Not all black people are sirens, but sirens are always black. Not only is Tavia struggling with her frustrations over having to hide her siren abilities, she's also dealing with being a young black woman. So Tavia is able to get her frustrations out through expressing her feelings about the Black Lives Matter movement. And Effie is right there with her also as a young black woman. And the way that it shows that you can speak out and do the right thing for your beliefs. The social commentary on this was so relevant to today's young black children. Sisters can be best friends. These two girls aren't biologically related, but they have been raised together as sisters. They have grown to love each other and are 100% each other's person. They do have other friends and enjoy other experiences that are different from each other, but they look out for each other and know each other better than anybody else can possibly know them. The way that they use sign language to communicate with each other is so pure and wholesome, and I loved seeing them be able to communicate and have their own special language. Actions have consequences. These girls are dealing with things in their past that has made them who they are today. Through that, they're seeing how what they did or experienced in years past affects them now and will affect them in the future. They are also learning that the choices that they make today will affect them in the future because they know what they've already experienced. It was nice to see a story where actions actually have consequences and aren't just shuffled under the rug. So what didn't I like about this story? There are many magical creatures in this story. Some of them are exactly what you expect and some of them have unique quirks that make them special to this story. There is a human creature called the Alokos. And I really don't know exactly what the Alokos are even after finishing the story. There's no real description other than they have a trill in their voice. And that's about it. I wish there was a better description of what Nell Logos was. The ending gets a little confusing. I did have to go back and reread what happened during certain parts just so I understand what was happening, although it does still have a solid ending. All right, let's discuss. If you could be any persona in a Renaissance fair, be it human or mystical creature, what would you be? 
let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to have a conversation about this. So what am I going to sew? A mermaid tail. It's actually going to be a mermaid tail blanket because Effie is a mermaid in the fair. My daughter looked at me and said, mom, can you finally make me a mermaid tail blanket since you're reading a story about a mermaid? Open Crafting Castle for business. I'm not a monster because I live in a world that gives me impossible choices. Using my daughter's measurements, I drew out the lines for the length of the tail and fin. For a little added detail, I hand drew the curvy lines on the fin and then sewed a straight stitch on top. My machine was being cranky with my thread, so I kept having to restart. It's time for a deep cleaning. Fabric buds builds up so quickly. Using elastic at the front center will give it that classic mermaid dip detail. Taking the tail and fin pieces, sew the fronts together and then the backs. And now we sew the front to the back. Take time to pin them so that nothing slips during the process. I save the end of the fin for the last to make sure I get clean angles at the corners when turning out. Add the waistband and you're done! Full tutorial is coming soon to www.buymeacoffee.com slash literary sewist. Power down crafting castle. What we need isn't dissuading or discouragement, or consoling. We don't need to be told we're all helpless. What we need is action. reasons to read A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow. Sisterly love is on point. There are love interests for both girls in this story, but they are not the main focus of the love. These two girls have a no bounds love for each other that is just completely inspiring. There is such a great connection between our world and the mystical world in this story that it falls into a completely believable alternative reality situation. The representation of the Black Lives Matter and people of color in this story was fantastic. Little nods throughout the story like how to do black hair and makeup or going to a protest lead the reader to know that those things matter. My overall reading for A Song Below Water is a 3.5. On Goodreads, it does show as a 4 because I wanted to give it a little boost up for the author because her representation with people of color in the Black Lives Matter movement was so important and I wanted to make sure that got recognized. But it's a fun and original concept, even though there are some parts of it that fell a little flat for me. I really did enjoy this story, so 3.5 to 4 stars. It's a pretty good book. Thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed what I had to say about Bethany C. Morrow's A Song Below Water or my mermaid tail project, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel for more installments of my bookish sewing goodness. 
I've got book reviews, sewing tutorials, and all things in between. See you next time.